Fractional 5, Unit 1, Curia 2, Transport Across Cell Membranes. Please make sure you've watched the first video previously so that you know about the parts of the cell membrane and the model cell experiment before you begin this one. As usual, we're going to begin with our starter questions based on the previous lesson's work to ensure that you've got all the background knowledge you need before we move on to any new content. So pause the video here and give these a try and then come back when you're ready to go over them. Okay, so number one, what is the function of the cell membrane? So remember, the function is to control entry and exit of substances or molecules into or out of the cell. Number two, what are the names of the two parts that make up the cell membrane? Phospholipids and proteins. And remember, you should be able to label those on a diagram as well. What does selectively permeable mean in relation to the cell membrane? Well, it means that the cell membrane only allows some molecules to pass through depending on their size. Out of starch and glucose, which would be able to pass through the membrane and why? Remember, it's glucose because it was small, where starch was too large to pass through. And what is the difference between passive and active transport? Well, active transport requires energy to take place, whereas passive transport doesn't. So just to show you where we are currently, we're still on Unit 1 Cell Biology and we're on Caria 2 Transport Across Cell Membranes. Now, remember to always look at the course spec or mandatory knowledge document produced by the SQA whenever you're revising a topic. So remember, the first two columns details all the knowledge that you can be tested on in the exam. Now, so far, we have only covered point A and um, we still have the rest of these to go. So that's what we're going to do in this lesson, um, which is actually going to be split over three parts. Um, so we're going to do part A and part B, covering the theory for this. And then we'll do part C, which is looking at a really important experiment that you can usually get tested on. So at the end of the last lesson, we learned that there's two categories of transport across the cell membrane. There's passive and there's active transport. Remember, passive does not need energy to happen. So we're going to focus on passive transport and we're going to break it down even further. So there are two types of passive transport that you need to know about in National 5, and these are diffusion and osmosis. Osmosis is a special case of diffusion that we'll come back to um, in the next part. So we're going to start with diffusion today. So our learning intention is we're going to investigate how substances move in and out of the cell and our success criteria is we want to be able to state the definition of diffusion and explain why diffusion is important to cells. So before we talked about movement of molecules across the membrane but how exactly does this happen? Well to get in and out of a cell substances diffuse across the cell membrane. They can only do this because the membrane has many pores or tiny holes in it. And remember, when we zoomed in on this last lesson, we saw the arrangements of phospholipids and proteins, which we can imagine are in here. So the small molecules can move between the phospholipids and proteins to get through the membrane by the process of diffusion. So now, before we move on to diffusion properly, we need to understand what concentration is and how to spot high and low concentrations of substances. Um, the questions that we will do later on in diffusion and osmosis depend on you to be able to do this. So you'll probably have heard the word concentration or concentrated before. If you've done chemistry, you definitely will have, but I'm not sure um, you would still understand what it would mean if I asked you to pour me some diluting juice um, and make it really concentrated or really dilute. I'm sure you'd be able to know what that meant without really thinking about it. So concentrated would mean you'd pour a lot of juice in and less water. So there'd be lots of juice particles in the water. So we'd say that is very concentrated. However, if I asked you to make it really dilute, you would put a little bit of juice in and you'd put a lot of water. So there would be a much lower concentration of juice in that cup compared to the one that was concentrated. Now, concentration is to do with how much of a particular substance there is in the total volume of a liquid or gas. So if a substance is very concentrated, it has a high concentration, so there's a lot of it. If it has a low concentration, then there isn't. To show you what I mean visually, what I've got here are these two diagrams um, with circles that represent particles. So if I asked you which solution has a higher concentration of water, would you say A? or would you say B? So remember the blue grey circles represent the sugar sucrose and the smaller yellow circles represent the water. So which solution has a higher concentration of water, A or B? So B would be correct because there's a higher number of particles of water in solution B. So solution B has a high concentration of water whereas solution A we would say has a lower concentration of water. Now we're going to look at sucrose instead. So remember, sucrose is the little, the bigger grey circles. So which solution has the higher concentration of sucrose, A or B? 
So in this case, A would be correct because A has a high concentration of sucrose. You can see there's lots of these particles here, whereas B has a lower concentration of sucrose. And hopefully that makes sense because we need to come back to that quite a bit as we move on. So now one very important point of diffusion is that in diffusion molecules move from a high concentration to a low concentration. And remember, this doesn't need energy to be able to happen. So if we look at this example up on the top left here, if I had sprayed perfume in the corner of a room, like in this diagram on the left hand side, um, then I can easily smell it in that corner. However, when I've just sprayed it, some of the other side of the room wouldn't be able to smell it as there's extremely low concentration of perfume particles in the air over there. Now, naturally, without energy, the perfume particles start to move from an area of high concentration on the bottom left hand side and spreads out throughout the room um, until there's an equal concentration. Now, this is why later on you can smell it on the other side of the room. So high concentration on the left, and they spread out to a low concentration throughout the room. Now, in living cells, diffusion occurs across a selectively permeable membrane. Now, remember that means the membrane only lets molecules of a certain size through, so bigger molecules will not be able to diffuse across, whereas small molecules will. And when the small molecules do diffuse across the membrane, they diffuse from a high to a low concentration. So in this example on the right-hand side, there's a visking tubing bag, just like we looked at in our last lesson, um, and it has a substance inside it. Now, for example, let's pretend that this substance is oxygen. So that's a small molecule that can move across the cell membrane. So imagine the little red dots are oxygen and they're in a higher concentration inside the skin tubing. And then outside in the water, there's a lower concentration. So what will happen naturally here is that those red dots, those oxygen particles, will move from a high concentration inside the skin tubing to the low concentration outside the skin tubing and will spread out evenly. So this happens without energy. So always remember diffusion or passive transport, molecules move from a high to a low concentration. Now the next term we need to understand is concentration gradients. So we know diffusion moves molecules from high to low concentrations and we can see this in the diagram here. Now if we imagine that going up the side here we have concentration, we have high concentration and then we have a low concentration down here. And if we imagine that going up the side and the molecules are moving from high to low, we see the arrow is going down what we call the concentration gradient, and this is the way to remember it. Now, if we put all of these things together, then we get our diffusion definition, which is really, really important. I cannot stress how important this is. You have to know the full diffusion definition up by heart. There's quite a few definitions in this topic, and they're extremely common in the exams or tests, so please do learn them, and this is where your flashcards will come in really handy. So we're going to split up this definition and have a look at it bit by bit. So the definition always starts with the movement of molecules. So this could be any small molecules that can pass across the select of the permeable membrane, like oxygen, carbon dioxide, amino acids, glucose. These molecules move from a higher concentration to a lower concentration, as we discussed, unlike in the diagrams we saw before, and we know it moves down a concentration gradient because it goes from high to low. And it doesn't need energy. We talked about that last lesson because diffusion is a form of passive transport. Then the next thing that's important to understand about diffusion is why it's so important in cells, because this is biology. So like last time, we're going to read through a short passage together, and then I want you to copy and complete the table below using the information. On the left-hand side of the table, I want you to list the substances which enter a cell by diffusion, and on the right, I want you to list the substances which leave a cell by diffusion. So we're going to read through this passage together, and then I want you to fill out the table. So diffusion is a type of passive transport where molecules move from a concentration down a concentration gradient until the molecules are evenly spread out. So we have a high concentration of molecules moving to an area of low concentration molecules. Diffusion allows useful molecules to enter the cell and waste products to exit the cell. Substances which enter a cell by diffusion are useful substances which are constantly being used up by the cell. There's always a higher concentration of these substances outside the cell than inside. Examples of such substances are glucose, amino acids and oxygen. Substances which leave a cell by diffusion are waste substances which are constantly being produced by the cell. There's always a higher concentration of these substances inside the cell than outside. Examples of such waste substances are carbon dioxide and urea. So what I want you to do now is pause the video here and come back when you're ready to mark your answers in your table. Okay, so going over our answers, you should have found that substances which enter a cell by diffusion are glucose, amino acids and oxygen, and those that leave a cell by diffusion are carbon dioxide and urea. 
what we know is that all of these molecules are small enough to pass through the cell membrane by diffusion. Okay, so just to summarise, living cells need to be able to get substances in and out of them across the cell membrane, and to do this, they use processes like diffusion. Diffusion allows cells to get the materials it needs to survive, for example, glucose and oxygen, which are the two most common things the cell would need, and it also allows them to get rid of waste substances like carbon dioxide, which we breathe out, and urea, which is a component of urine, which is produced by cells. So we need to remember there are things the cell needs, so it can gain them by diffusion, and there are things it needs to get rid of as well, waste products too. Now, one example of a place where diffusion is really important in our body is in the lungs. Now, you should know this from doing any science before, that in our lungs, oxygen diffuses from the lungs into the blood after we breathe in, and then it's transported to our cells through the blood for them to use it. Then carbon dioxide diffuses from the blood into the lungs so that we can breathe out and get rid of it. So this is an example of where diffusion is used in our organs. Now, out of these four small molecules, um, there's one that I haven't actually mentioned so far in any of my examples. Can you work out which one that is? Water, that's correct. So it's really, really important that you never talk about water diffusing and you watch out for it as a trick question um, about diffusion. So water has its own process of moving across the membrane, which is what we're going to move on to next. So that other passive process, which is osmosis. But before we do this, I want us to try some quick questions to consolidate our knowledge on diffusion. So can you pause the video here and give these a try? And as usual, play as soon as you're ready to hear the answers. Perfect. So the answers are as follows. So what is passive transport? So passive transport is the movement of molecules across the cell membrane, but it doesn't require energy. The most important thing here is it doesn't require energy. Name the two types of passive transport. Well, the one we focused on in this video was diffusion, but right at the start, I also told you osmosis is the other type, and that's what we're going to move on to in our next video. Number three, give the definition of diffusion. So remember, you have to start at movement of molecules, from a higher concentration to a lower concentration, down a concentration gradient. And then you can add that this doesn't require energy. Name two substances that enter a cell by diffusion, that would be oxygen and glucose. Two that leave a cell by diffusion would be urea and carbon dioxide. And finally, which small molecule does not move by diffusion? We've just went over the fact that that is water and that moves by osmosis, which is what we're gonna move on to. OK, so now we're moving on, leaving diffusion behind and looking at our second type of passive transport, osmosis, which we'll be looking at in the next video. So if you feel you've understood diffusion well enough, you can move on now and watch the video Unit 1, Karia 2, and this will be Part 2B.